All right, David, let's get into the four-point game plan, shall we? Let's do it. Now, the four-point game plan is something you use when you're in a manpower development era. In other words, like in our business right now, we're like 1% market penetration. No good. You know, we can get up to 10 to 20%, probably 20, even 25%. You know, the really goal of any company is to get so big, the government's going to come down on you and want to break you up because you're a monopoly, because you've done so well at growing your business. A successful, well, a, a well-run business is going to grow. And as you grow, you're going to take over bigger and bigger market share. And so you'd like to get as big as you can get. But we all, we all know that you can get up to 10 to 25% without creating any kind of havoc out there in the marketplace. But how are you going to do that? Well, you need to think of the Coca-Cola example. Coke, when uh, they started, they were not interested in how much, uh, they weren't interested in sales per location. You don't do that when you're in your expansion mode. That's for later. That's in your development mode. What you, when Coke was expanding, they were primarily after what? They were after getting the machines out there. They wanted a machine, which is an outlet. They wanted one on every floor of every building, they want it on every corner, corner, they want it at every gas station, every grocery store, they wanted it where you never had to walk more than 50 feet before you could get yourself a Coke. See, they wanted the outlets. They wanted the locations. They wanted to make it easy. If you were thirsty, there's going to be a Coke nearby. You didn't have to walk many steps. Now, after they've got the outlets out there, that's when they're worried about sales per location. See, at this point, then it makes, it makes sense to go out there and run your national advertising campaigns and all of that stuff because you have plenty of machines. You, everywhere they, the message goes, there's going to be a machine out there. But you can't really get the bang for your buck on advertising unless you have the outlets out there. If you're a bank, you're not going to run national advertising unless you have banks all over the country. So that's the way it was with Coke. So you have to understand your stage of development. And so now, if once you get those locations out there, that's when you're going to start adding your uh, different, uh, you know, additional, your orange drink, diet, and other flavors out there. So you get more variety and everything. But in the beginning, you're just trying to get the machines out there. Now, when you look at that from an organizational standpoint, if you're trying to build, you're trying to get increase your outlets, the first thing that's your priority is to get people. And people start as recruits. You've got to get them on board before you can start developing them. And so that's why in the four-point game plan, the first step is everyone in the organization is focused on recruiting. And that means the number one focus of everybody on the team is recruiting. Why? Because great companies grow from within. See, most of your great people, you don't want to just get anybody. You want to get good people. You want to get people to have a chance to do something great. And so, if most great people are not going to be reading newspapers, you know, you're not going to find them from cold calling. 
running up and down the street. You're not going to find them from uh, passing out flyers, dropping them from a blimp going through town, you know, putting them on cars at the mall. You're not going, you know, putting them on telephone poles. You know, you're not going to find newspaper ads. You're just not going to get, you can, anything you do will turn up a little bit. But the bulk of the great people you get, you're not going to get for these kind of cold contact methods. One reason newspapers don't work, and again, news, anything will work occasionally. But, uh, you know, these long shot things, the reason they, like, for example, the, the, the newspaper doesn't work is that people who you find from the newspaper, by and large, you're not the first thing they've answered. And chances are they've been in 40 different things and they've already alienated their, their warm market. So when they come in, they're not going to be much good to you because they really have no place to go, nobody to talk to. None of their friends are talking to them anymore because they don't trust them. They've used up their credibility. So where you get the great large numbers, see, what you want to get is large numbers of quality people. And the thing about quality people is they're working. They're already working. And they're doing well. But deep down inside, they want more. Or they need more. But they don't talk about it. They're too busy. they got too much responsibilities on them to shut down and go looking for another job. In fact, they never, you know, they're, they're stable people. They don't even really know how you would go about finding a new job. And, you know, getting in... in and newspaper ads, and when would they go even do any interviewing like that? So they're kind of lost. So they, they have that simmering. The best people have, have had a simmering desire inside of them for a long period of time that there's got to be more out there. I'm underemployed. I, I need a better opportunity. I really don't really enjoy what I'm doing here. Don't really enjoy uh, the people I'm working with. I'd like to have a chance. You know, what I'm doing is not that exciting. There's just not much going on here. Now, they don't talk about these things. They're happy and they're cheerful and they're working around. But deep down inside, they got this gnawing at them inside. And see, if a friend, and they're, they're the kind of people, they're quality, they're going to be suspicious if someone comes in and calls them on the phone and things like that. You might get them that way, but usually not. But if a friend, see, they trust their friends. And if a friend says to them, Don't know if you've thought about it, but uh, don't know if you've ever looked around, if you've heard about this company, if you ever heard about asset management, if you ever heard about uh, uh, a chance to build a team of your own, if you ever thought about having a business of your own, if you ever thought about going into business for yourself, throw some conversation at them. Have you ever thought of moving on and maybe doing something different? bigger, more challenging, and you start a conversation with them, and sooner or later that you'll, you'll find out if they're interested. And if you have to beat them with a crowbar, well, of course, the timing is wrong. But you'll find with most recruiting, timing is the number one issue. Once you get around good people, timing is the number one issue. And so when they're around their friends... The friends can bring that up in the right way and they're going to be more likely to get an honest response and people, these kind of people are more likely to trust a friend to show them something legitimate when the timing is right. So that's why you want the number one focus. You start off as everyone in the organization is focused on recruiting. Because that's where, if you don't get the new blood, you have no potential. 
It's like a car. Without gas in the tank, you're going nowhere. And when you get new people in, new recruits, they have unlimited potential. And so as long as you've got, you can overcome any kind of disaster, any kind of problem you have, if you have enough new people, because that's where your future growth comes from. And if you have the entire organization focused on recruiting, whether they're interested in going into management or not, but they understand what the team goal is. They, want to ha they, they understand that for them to excel, they have to help the team excel. And if the team is in primarily in a manpower expansion, manpower development mode, they're in a race for outlets. See, another term you hear is race for outlets. They don't want to let another company come in with the same idea and take all the primo spots. They want to get there first. And another thing in the race for outlets is they're in a race to get the good people. They want to increase outlets, which are, in our business, people are really the outlets. I don't care how many stores you have. It's the people who run the stores. And they want to get in a race. There's only so many quality superstar type people in any one given area. You want those people working for you. So you want to get out there and get in front of them as fast as possible. You want to be in a hurry quicker you get them on board, the quicker they can start contributing. And so that's why you want to have as many eyes and ears on the ground to make sure no stone is unturned. And you can find the people that you would never find if you did these things like cold calling or passing out flyers or, you know, stapling sheets of paper onto a telephone pole or running ads in newspaper. You're never going to get the really uh, large numbers of the really good red-blooded quality people that way. But you will get it friend to friend to friend. And there's only a certain number out there. So you want to be, uh, you want to have a sense of urgency about it. And you have that by having every person on your team understand this is important. This is the number one goal of our team. Now, you may not be interested in sales. I mean, in, in management. You might only want to do sales. You know, you just I'm in here, I'm part-time or I'm full-time. I have very specific requirements. This is all that I want to do. I don't want to get encumbered with a team and things like that. I, I'm just doing this to make money so I can have maximum free time to put into my kids or a charity or some other project that I'm working on. Well, great, but we're not going to have time to train you to sell unless you're going to help us get our number one team goal down. We don't have time. See, 100% of our time is spent uh, looking for recruits. And if you want to come in and have us take the time to train you uh, to just be a salesperson, you're going to have to help us. We'll be glad to do that if you'll help us satisfy our number one goal as a team, which is growth through recruiting. And if you'll help us find some great recruiting prospects, then we can have time. You'll increase time on our schedule. We can afford to uh, train you uh, and teach you the sales side. But uh, if you're just going to come in and pepper us with questions, what you're going to be doing is getting us off track from our main goal. And it does no good if we make a bunch of sales, but we actually don't get the people on board and get them processed and training to lay the foundation for future growth because we're just going to be like a dog going in circles making sales the rest of our life. Uh, we want to do more than that. So we're not going to let you come in and get us sidetracked. If you don't want to get into management or build a team for yourself, that's great, unbelievable but we still are going to expect you to help us with our recruiting thrust. And this causes us all to be unified. Everybody is on the same mission. Everybody is, lock, is moving in lockstep towards the same goal, same mission of manpower development, expansion of the team, 
our number one focus is on recruiting. Sales are a byproduct of training the new recruits. They're not the primary focus now. Like up, up here, we, you know, we're not trying to get the most sales per location. See, we're not trying, we're not, not worried about the sales and how many sales per office right now. What we're trying to do is expand our outlets. We're trying to get people on board who know how to take this message to other people so we can take our message to the masses. We can't take our message to the masses with three or four people in this office. We've got to have 30 or 40 or three or 400. So we've got to be in a hurry to get large numbers of people trained. And as a byproduct product of training them, of course, we're going to ma be making sales. They're going to be getting the product. Uh, people that we're in the process of recruiting will wind up getting the, the product. And even if they don't come on board by showing them what we do uh, as part of the recruiting process, sales will be made. And as we train them, uh, sales will be made. So sales in this phase, in the manpower development, where we're racing for outlets, sales are a byproduct, not a number one focus. Once we get all the outlets we need, then we'll shift and sales per location will become the primary focus. But right now, we're just trying to get our company built. It's kind of like you go to war if you're any time a nation has to go to war, they, they're going to need more people that they have. They're going to need more soldiers. So you go through the early development of a war as a rapid development of a big recruiting effort and putting them through the boot camp phase to get them mobilized for action in a short period of time. And you're not uh, measuring them on what they do out in the field after they get trained, you know, they're trained and they're on assignment. No, you're just trying to get them on board and equipped and trained eventually be producing out in the field. So that's the same way it is in business. You're, when you decide to explode your business, you decide to say, we need a team, we need to get bigger, we need to get bigger fast, the first step is to get everybody unified behind the number one focus of recruiting being the number one focus of everyone in the organization. That way, you're moving together. You don't have the friction of certain people fighting you and asking the wrong questions and trying to pull you another direction. Everybody understands your purpose. Everybody understands your mission. Everybody understands the priority. And as a result, your train can get moving, keep moving down the track because everybody does their job. Everybody knows what uh, role they've got to play in keeping this thing moving in the right direction. So that's what I would say about the first step. And I actually got pretty wordy on it, David. Anything to add? No, you did a fantastic job right there. Wow, that was great. That's a little long, but it's important that you start this thing with a bang. All right, let's go on to uh, part two.